stop forgetting. This ESP32 list never forgets, and you can make one of your own. We're using an e-paper screen, an ESP32 Super Mini. And from that, we're gonna use our iPhone to connect to our to-do list so we can update it dynamically. Hi, I'm Christine, and my channel is all about creating fun and creative wearable projects, things that you can make. I've also written a book about wearable technology, which is available at all good bookstores. <laughs> the most important thing we're gonna need, an e-paper screen. So this is what is going to hold all of our to-do list items that will refresh in the morning. Secondly, we're gonna need one of these little guys here. So you're gonna need yourself a microcontroller. This one here is an ESP32. It has a C3 chip and yes, it is pink. So I've already pre-soldered these guys on, but you need an ESP32 chip. Super important because we're gonna be using Wi-Fi and the internet to access our to-do list from our mobile phone. A rechargeable battery that will build this into our circuit so that way we can have the item that will be portable on our wrist or wherever it is you would like to make this. We're gonna need to find a little charge board. This one is a little USB-C, cute little guy. What we can do with this is solder our battery to it and then it means that we can charge the battery on the go. We're gonna need a little switch. So this will be our on off switch. Lastly, the another essential item is our little button. We need a button to access turning on the circuit and similar. So those are the items for the circuit. I'm just outside the Halifax event for curiosities and oddities and I thought I'd try my to-do list. Just show you how it works. So I'm at the Oddities event, which is one of the events on my task list. And what we're gonna do is using the phone, which is connected to the circuit board, we're now gonna tick that off our list. We have a look at the device. At the moment, it does say that that event is on my list. And we'll go to the app and we'll select Oddities event, toggle completion, get that sent, and boom, it does it pretty quickly. So once that event is updated on here, you can just switch off the device because that is the beauty of e-paper is that list will stay as it is now. So that's it, we've done that off our tick list and we're ready to go. For the components, I do use, I know it looks a bit of a rat's nest right now, but I use these crocodile clips, alligator clips, you might call them something different, but they're great for prototyping. I always highly recommend to prototype your circuit first. So what I've done already off camera, but it doesn't maybe make for interesting watching, is you're gonna prototype by adding this circuit to your board to make sure you can get these guys to work together. Once you're sure everything does work, and I've tested it, all my items do work together. That's what we can get into the build. One essential part of building your circuit is going to be going online and looking at the data sheets for the items that you're using. I know I'm using an ESP32 C3 Mini, so I've gone online and from that I've checked the pins on this little guy here, I've had a look what my pin numbers are, and then I've decided to write down my pin numbers and what I'm connecting to it. So for this super mini board, we can see these are our pin numbers here, and I have connected these pins to my screen. So the pins that I used with this C3 board are shown here. I'm going to solder the pins that I need onto this board because I don't really want to have this chunky connector on the back of my wearable. have finished 
soldering our fancy e-paper board. So we've got this soldered and what we did is we soldered on these little legs and they have these ring terminals at the end which will make it very easy to attach with conductive thread if you're sewing your circuit. So this is for a wearable circuit. We've already got them done on our circuit board. So what we can do is we'll take each terminal, one from the ESP32 and one from our e-paper and these will get sewn together. I'm doing this because I do like the aesthetic of this and it's going to be our little wrist piece. We have got our battery and we have also got our battery charger. This little guy is so small, it's fantastic. It's USB-C. These little boards are pretty inexpensive. We're gonna solder the battery to the charge board to start with. Also just wrap each connection individually, power and the ground, just because usually this can be one of the weaker parts of your circuit. I have definitely had them overuse with constant bending and so on. I have had these come out. So I just like to reinforce that a little bit more. So our battery is attached and then we have both of these, which I haven't yet cut the bottoms off because we don't want to short it because it is attached to the battery. <laughs> We're gonna take the fabrics that we're gonna use. So I've got neoprene because I love using neoprene for my wearables. It's a great stretchy fabric, but it's also, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got some thickness to it. So it gives us a little protection, a little bit of padding for our wearable circuits. I've got these two colors here, this black and this sort of tealy color. What I'm gonna do is put my main circuit as much as possible on the teal piece, and that's what will go straight onto the red and then the black neoprene will be what goes over top of it so I can cut out an area for my screen for example just to make sure we get some nice straight lines I usually use these roller cutters which are really good and get it on your measuring area and then we can just cut this as straight as possible Here are our two pieces of fabric. What I'm gonna do now is measure our components and just see how they might fit. Star of the show, which is our e-paper, and we really wanna have that very visible. I'm gonna put this in this central position. Just make sure wires are gonna be nice and straight. Then we need to figure out if that piece is there. Where should we have our circuit board? So I'm gonna have my circuit board just in front, so that'll be on this part of my wrist and then the screen will go there. Now that these are placed, what I'm gonna do is just use a little bit of clear thread and I'm just gonna sew the corners of each of these items. So that way it just holds it in place while we make some more decisions. Here we have our clear thread, invisible thread. Can you see it? Ooh, invisible. Go ahead and take quite a long piece of string. And I remember we're just gonna sew the four corner holes. So it's really great that this screen has those holes for mounting. So that is just holding that into place. So that means we can see how this might look when we come to put it onto our wrist. That's just sort of the first checking it, making sure it's where we want it to be. Now let's do the same with the microcontroller board, the little guy here, and same thing. We're just just gonna hold it into place and we're just gonna take a little bit of thread and secure it. So we finished the first pass. So this has now been secured. The screen and the little microcontroller, these have now been secured just with a little bit of invisible, can you see it? A little bit of invisible thread. So it's just held into place. So that way we can place this on our wrist and just check the placement for it. The reason why I've used these wires like this is I'd like to display them. So I'm now gonna go through again with my clear thread and and I'm just going to sew each ring terminal into place. I just like how this looks with the little wires showing. So I'll get on with that. Mm -hmm. 
So these are the ring terminal wires from the e-paper screen. And so we're gonna now use this to connect the e-paper to our little circuit board. We did do a little test. I checked that this still fits nicely around my wrist. This is the way I'll be wearing it, so that's perfect. And then with each of these, because we've labeled them previously, so this one is DC wire, we're gonna find the pin that it connects to on our board here. And what I'm gonna do is hold the two metal ring terminals together, and then I'm gonna sew these with some conductive fabric. The rest of the connection. So now we have all of the black wires which were attached to our e-paper screen. Those have now also been sewn. Always do a little test just to make sure it fits. I've checked my circuit and good news, it actually works. So that's fantastic. So now I can take off my super ugly labels. <laughs> Let's wire up our little power solution. So let's get the battery attached. What you'll wanna do is with the device, roughly how you want it to be placed. What I normally do is I take these little sewing clips, which are great for when we're making our circuit, and I'll just clip this into place. I usually choose an underside or a flat area for where the battery might go. And we just want this to be slightly protruding from the edge there. And I'll actually sew a little pocket over top of that battery just to protect it and make sure it stays in place. So what we're going to do is cut the fabric so it is larger than our battery. So you will want a good edge around this. So we've got our pocket and we're just popping our battery down inside it. So here is the front side of it. And then what we've done is we have now sewn this felt along the back. It's covering up our stitching. And for when we're making wearables, it can sometimes be a really good idea just to make sure that items like batteries, which might need changing, we can easily do that by just sort of removing it from the pocket. <laughs> Another part of our circuit is going to be adding the little funky button that we have, this little cute guy that I've shown. So what we're going to do is we're going to press that button into our fabric. So that will go through this neoprene so easily. It has now been pressed into our fabric. It went in really nice and easily. Don't forget, these are just prototype pieces. That is the point of making a prototype is that we're learning as we go. We're figuring out what works and what doesn't work. And often we have to change our prototypes as we go. And then eventually when you get to the prototype that works really well, you can then make it into your final piece and everything will be accurate. We've attached our button, we've pressed it through and on the back of it now, we have soldered it. These two on this side are the ones that we've now pushed through and that will be leading to this pin at the end, pin five. And we're just gonna solder that wire to this ring pull. So then our button will be connected to our circuit. Before we jump into our code, let's have a reminder of what our project is doing. Here is the device on our arm. We can see we've got our task list here. And what's going to happen is part of our task list, we want to make some changes. So at the very bottom, it's quite small to see on the screen, but here it tells us what is the IP address and where it's connected. This one is currently connected to Wi-Fi, so you can connect it to your home network. And then we'll go in and we'll make a change. I'm going to do update video, then we'll click update task tasks and it does change the text quite quickly but then to cycle through we've got some color changes that we want to happen on screen that does take a couple of refreshes but once it has refreshed and it has finished with this flashing you'll know when it's done you can turn off this device and it will keep that on screen forever. Run through the code in a very quick way. The code is available on GitHub. Sometimes I do an additional video to absolutely explain line by line. This is a pretty complex program, but all you'll need to edit is changing these pin numbers for the board that you're using. Also, make sure you change the SSID and password for your network, so that way you can run it at home using your home network, and you can also run it in that AP mode where you just connect to the board. So go through the code, have a look for any visual editing that you want to do for the web page design. You can change the background colors or font colors, for example. So there are a few things that you can edit in there. If you ever have any questions or comments, you can always reach me through my channel or on social media. Please do leave a comment below. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this build.